and welcome to the session in which we will discuss other information and supplementary information as they relate to the financial statements, the audited financial statements and the annual report. So we're going to learn what is other information and supplementary information and what's the auditor's responsibility about other information and supplementary information. Now in the previous session we looked at other information and we're done with this topic that topic is done if you need to go to the prior session in this session we'll focus on supplementary information in the next session we would look at required supplementary information so notice the difference one is required and one is just supplementary information and this is what we will focus on in this session so simply put what is supplementary information or simply put i'm going to refer to it as si well, what is that? Well, it's any information presented in addition to the financial statement, but it's not necessary to fairly present the financial statement. So hold on a second. So it's not necessary. Why am I presenting this? Well, you're voluntarily presenting this. The company want to present this. And it's not only voluntary they presented this, it's audited. So supplementary information that's audited and voluntary. Now, the auditor is engaged to audit the supplementary information. So it's not required that you have your supplemental information audited, but if the company wants their supplemental information to be audited, then they have to engage. So it's basically simply put, it's a different engagement. So why, why would the company pay for this extra? Well, simply put, it's the purpose is to provide additional information for analysis, additional analysis. So I'm giving you more information. So you, you would look basically at more detailed information. And we're going to discuss what supplemental information is. This way you'll understand that it's going to give you more information about the company. So the audit report for this supplemental information might accompany the audited financial statements or could be made readily available separately somewhere else. For example, they can post the report on their website. And if you want it, you can download it. So simply put, it can be its, its own separate report or part of the audit report. So you could either have it either or. Now bear in mind, you cannot perform this audit if the audit report, so if you audited the company and you're expressing an adverse opinion, if you're advers think about it, if you're expressing an adverse opinion, what does that mean? It means they're not complying with GAAP. Why even, what, what value does it give to the users to give them more information about the company, about their supplemental information? Or if you're disclaiming, now if you're unqualified or qualified, that's fine. But if you're, if you are, if you are issuing a report expressing an adverse opinion or disclaiming an opinion, then you cannot audit the supplemental information. It's useless to do so. Okay, so, so supplemental information might include accounting or non-accounting information, but all the information is derived from the financial statement. Now we've been talking supplemental information, supplemental information. So what is exactly supplemental information? Well, before we proceed and explain what supplemental information is, give you examples, most likely you are a CPA candidate or an accounting student. And if that's the case, you are looking for help. Most likely you are taking a CPA review course and end up here. Yes, I can help you. Whether you are a student or a CPA candidate, go to farhatlectures.com. I provide additional resources, additional resources. I don't replace your CPA review course. Lectures, multiple choice, true, false, notes, PowerPoint, PowerPoint slides, notes. If you are an accounting student, this is a list of all my accounting courses. Again, everything is organized by chapter and course. My CPA material is also organized by your CPA review course, such as Becker, Wiley, Gleam, uh, Roger, Miles, so it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording on YouTube. If you're watching, it means it's helping you. Like it, share it with others so it helps other. Connect with me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Reddit. And if you're a CPA candidate, join my CPA exam support group on GroupMe where we can discuss CPA exam information with me as well as other candidate. So let's talk about supplemental information. As I mentioned, it's derived. Derived means this information is coming. You're bringing it from the financial statement and cover the same period. So you cannot have supplemental information for year X1, for year X2, and the financial statements are for year X3. So they have to be both for the same period. So let's now let's go in and let what are some examples of this? Well, Examples will be summaries extracted. Again, I'm saying the same thing. Extracted, derived, same thing. I'm emphasizing the point. Give me an example. Stop repeating the same thing and give me an example. Well, detailed of other income as shown in the statement of operation or 
the income statement. Well, let's take a look at Tesla. This is the income statement or statement of operation for Tesla. And Tesla, they have different lines. And let's take a look specifically at other expense or income. Specifically, they have 122 million in losses. You may want to give additional information, an additional schedule, detailed information about those other expenses and losses. This will be supplemental information. Now, bear in mind, they might have something in the notes about this number, but that's even in addition to the notes. You're giving supplemental information. It's voluntary, but it's also being audited. Again, what's the purpose? Is to give you more information for the purpose of analysis. Where is this number coming from? You could also give details of the general and administrative expenses again if you look at tesla here they have a line called selling general and administrative 3.1 billion maybe in the notes they have a little bit more of information what's included in selling general and administrative supplemental information i'll give you even more information more details breakdown and i'll tell you that information itself was audited so you can rely on it schedule of breakdown of investment property plant and equipment that those in, that information is from the balance sheet so any expended number any expended table containing the details of any line in the financials so you're looking at it at a number in the financial statement and okay here's more information more detailed information about this number go ahead and use it for your own purpose maybe we'll give you a better idea okay any statistical data also. Now, what is the auditor's responsibility? Because this is what we care about. Now we know what supplemental information is. Now, what is the auditor's responsibility? Well, the auditor responsibility, and just you, you, you may want to memorize this statement, determine whether the information is fairly stated in all material respect in relationship to the financial statement as a whole. So are they fairly stated in relationship to the financial statement? So the supplemental information, whatever the whether the information, whether SI, is fairly stated what's the standard i'm looking at the financial statement as a whole is the information that you're giving me that detailed information jive with the financial statement matches the financial statement number so that's basically the standard and let's take a look at the report to see exactly what it reads and once you read the report then it hopefully it will break everything down for you the you explain the information given here is presented for the purpose of additional analysis you remember i told you what's the purpose of this is initial analysis and is not part of the required notice it's voluntary financial statement such information is the responsibility of management of course it's the responsibility of management was derived from the re now the auditor could work on it but it's the responsibility of the management in other words they could help them prepare it it's the not help them prepare it they could contribute to that work derived from the from the Derived, derived from and relates directly to the underlying accounting and other records used to prepare financial statement. It's extracted, derived from the financial statement. Everything that I told you now, this is the official report. The information has been subject to the auditing procedures. What are those auditing procedures? We're going to talk about them. Applied in the audit of the financial statement and certain additional procedures. What are those additional procedures? So what would they do? Well, comparing and reconciling such information directly with the accounting and other record used to prepare the financial statement. So simply put, here they're explaining exactly what the auditors would do. They would look at the supplemental information, reconcile it, compare it to the financial statement, and hopefully everything matches. It should matches. Or to the financial statement themselves or other procedures according accordance with the auditing standard generally accepted accounting generally accepted in the united states of america or whatever you know standard you are using in our opinion the information is fairly stated in all material respect in relationship to the financial statement as a whole notice the statement right here that i started with so simply put this is the report once again this report could be a separate report can be downloaded from anywhere easy to find for the users or it can be part of the audit report, a separate paragraph. Now, what procedures used to meet those, those objectives? Right there, we cover them. Let's review the procedures. You, you can make inquiries with management about the purpose of the supplementary information. Why are you preparing this? Understand how the information was prepared. If they prepared it, st 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 let's talk to us. Reconcile, what, which, which, which we see in the audit report. Understand any assumptions or estimate the company is making. Evaluate the completeness, is everything there? Also, the most important thing is get management representation about the points above and the availability of the supplemental report. Simply put, you want the management to explicitly state that's their responsibility. Everything here is their responsibility. And the report will be available, whether it's part of the audit report or available somewhere that can be easily accessed. 
So this is the supplemental information. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe and start to work multiple choice questions. Don't shortchange yourself. The CPA exam is important. I present the material differently, differently than your CPA review course. And the, I hope that I can help you understand it better. And if I do, please don't shortchange yourself. Subscribe. The next topic we would look at is RSI, required supplemental information. We need to see what this is, what's the auditor's responsibility, so on and so forth. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.